I remembered the Lincoln lawyer from the Matthew McConaughey film from, gosh, I think over a decade ago. Um, uh, and a lot of people remember that movie. Um, that movie and this show are based off of a series of Michael Connelly books about a lawyer named Mickey Holler, who does all of his business from the back of his um, Lincoln, which is why they call him the Lincoln lawyer, which makes a lot of sense because he practices in LA and um, it saves a lot of time because there's a lot of driving around. Um, so uh, I was excited to get to uh, to join this production. You know, it's a David E. Kelly production. Um, Ted Humphrey is the showrunner who comes from The Good Wife. Um, so the f this first strip was the only one that I saw in the beginning and was so good. Um, it's uh, it's an exciting, like really fun, exciting lawyer show. And um, Manuel Garcia Rulfo is uh, plays Mickey Holler. Um, which is great for a couple of reasons. One being uh, he's a fantastic actor, but also it just, it, I mean, that character, um, you know, he's like, a, he's an LA Latino, that character. So, um, you know, having um, an actual Latino in that role um, is really, is really nice um, to get that representation right. Um, and then uh, Nev Campbell's in the show. And then I was a nice little reunion kind of with uh, Becky Newton from Ugly Betty for me. Trevor Elliott um, is a little bit like more well-known name is kind of an Elon Musk type of a guy. Like is somebody who's like, like a high profile tech guy um, who has been accused um, of a double homicide. And uh, Mickey uh, comes in to defend Trevor and it's a very big high profile case and it gets dropped in Mickey's lap at a time when he um, really needs a big high profile win um, and so the case of defending Trevor Elliott becomes the big case that lasts the whole season. It was, it was really an emotionally challenging part. You know, this is a guy who, I mean, he's been accused of killing his wife um, and her lover. Uh, and so you, it, it's, you have the emotional impact of that, um, of the loss, I mean, of losing the, your wife who you love, um, the complicated emotions of the affair, um, and then the complicated emotions of having to go on trial um, to try and now save your life, right? Um, so, and it was, the nice thing about it is it was so, it's so well written um, that it just, it makes the actress job a lot easier. Um, it's, God, I hope people get to see it. It's such, it's a really funny, like really like heartwarming show about, you know, just a regular, like, really young family trying to make things work. It's, um, it's about these two, um, you know, teenagers, these two 17 year olds who have a baby and end up deciding to drop out of high school to raise their kid. And they move in with, um, with the boy's parents, which is myself and Katie Mixon. Um, and so it's this family comedy about you know, this, this intergenerational comedy about, uh, you know, this mixed family trying to make things work and and uh, feeling uh, unexpectedly old. You know, these the, the two grandparents are only 40 years old and like, don't feel like grandparents and aren't totally comfortable with being labeled grandparents. And meanwhile, you've got these two teenagers that you know, love their baby and they love each other and they're trying to make this work, but also, you know, kind of want to go to the homecoming dance and and uh, worry that, you know, um, about if they've made the right choice dropping out of school and that maybe one of them at least um, should get back in there so that they can, um, you know, build a better future for their family. And, uh, you know, the, the writer, Skylar Helford, is just like a really talented young um, female writer and uh, um, and it's got CBS behind it. So, uh, you know, I, I I hope and the young actors, too, are so great. Um, it's Creech, Kino, 
and Connor Collapsis play the young couple and they're both wonderful. They're just really, really funny, but not in like a mean, sarcastic way, you know? Like the show's written with a ton of heart. Well, it's funny, you know, cause I mean, I, I mean, my oldest kid is 21, right? So like this could very well have been me. Um, when Anel and I started having kids, uh, you know, we, like I relate to a lot of my character cause we, uh, none of our friends were having kids when we started having kids. I mean, we weren't in our teens, but we were in our mid twenties. And, uh, and it's, it was very isolating. You know, we suddenly had a baby and then we couldn't go out and, you know, we were home and we had to take care of a baby and we were exhausted and slowly your friends don't come around as much or they stop calling and asking if you can go because they know you can't. And, uh, you know, not to be mean, but it's just your lives diverge. Um, and so I very much uh, relate to that. Yeah, uh, you know, I started it because I was uh, I was running the New York City Marathon to um, raise money for Culture City. Um, and we did that and we posted those videos and it was a lot of work. Um, and then the marathon was done. And then I I did a couple of like interviews. You know, I, I interviewed a couple really interesting um, women. Um, uh, Imani Barbarin, we talked about like disability ish, disability rights issues and accessibility stuff, and which was just fascinating. She's such a superstar. Um, so, so smart. Um, so I highly recommend going and checking out Imani Barbarin's um, social media stuff and her posts and her blog. Um, she's wonderful. Um, and then also interviewed um, Mara Gay, who's at um, the New York Times editorial page. Um, and we talked early on during the pandemic because she was one of the first, you know, kind of high profile people that came out to talk about her experience having COVID. Um, and, uh, and then I think I just, yeah, I think I got busy. You know, we have three kids. So like in the midst of the pandemic and it was online school, it was, it was just a lot. I, I think it was a mix of being really busy and just feeling kind of tired and not having the creative energy to pour in, like just the extra creative energy to pour into something new that I wasn't clear on what the point of it was. Like I've left it up and, and it's still, like I'm hoping to, you know, keep creating, put some new content on there. I just don't know what it's gonna be. It was good. You know, it was interesting because I, you know, you watch, you, you watch the news and things. And I don't know about you, but for me, I watch the news vocally. Like I have lots of opinions about what I'm seeing on the news and in interviews. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of like hair pulling, like, why did you ask that? Or why aren't you asking this? Um, it's a lot harder than it looks. Um, I was helped by the fact that I just recorded it all and then edited it together later. So it, I think it made me look like a better interviewer than uh, than I am. Uh, you know, doing some doing it live uh, is really hard. Like it's hard to uh, um, you've got a list of questions of things you want to get to, and sometimes you know the, the answers take you off onto a tangent that's also interesting. Um, and I think it takes a lot of skill to be able to really listen to what the person's saying and respond to that without totally losing track of what you wanted to get to. Um, yeah, it was tricky. Yeah, definitely check out The Lincoln Lawyer. Uh, drops All the episodes drop on Netflix on May 13th. It's really good. It's really good. Like if you, if you like legal dramas, um, if you are a fan of The Good Wife, it's just, it has all that good stuff. It's great legal drama, it's uh, exciting, um, great performances, great writing, um, highly recommended.